Hey everybody, welcome to the video. My name is Colby, and today we've got some really interesting Starlink news to share. Really interesting situation going on in countries in Africa right now in regards to Starlink internet access availability and certain restrictions being put in place by local governments. So today we're gonna kind of jump into that issue, see what's going on, talk about some of the implications, some of the consequences that have come out of that. So let's get onto the computer here real quick and browse a news article that I wanna kind of share with you. This was posted last week and it's from a website called TechZim. And apparently what has happened is the local government in Zimbabwe, in Africa, has demanded that Sterling shut down services in that country. Now this is important because according to this article, there are estimated to be about 5,000 Starlink users in Zimbabwe. Now, in case you're not aware, Starlink isn't technically approved in that country. It's not available to order there. However, there are several neighboring countries where it is available, where Starlink is approved. So what people have been doing is buying countries using an address in one of the neighboring areas and importing it into countries like Zimbabwe where it technically is not approved for use. And by subscribing to the Rome plan, whether the regional roam plan or global roam plan, it allows you to travel with that Starlink unit and use it in unsupported countries like Zimbabwe. So people are using that loophole, the roam loophole, to be able to get service, get connectivity in areas where it's not technically available. So this article kind of goes on to feature an email that was being sent to users in that country, in Zimbabwe. Starlink is apparently telling them, hey, your internet's gonna be shut off on April 30th. Now this is kind of interesting and kind of important because obviously all those people that are using Starlink Rome in that country will no longer have service, no longer have internet access. And obviously that's a big deal if you're one of those people that are affected. But it also has some other wider implications for some areas of the rest of the world. As far as I know, you know, I've been covering Starlink since 2020, early 2021. Uh, as far as I know, this is the first really communication that Starlink has sent out that is telling people that, hey, your service is gonna be shut down if you are operating your Starlink unit in an unauthorized area. Now, they use some pretty broad language there, and I'm gonna switch the screen now to show you another screenshot of another email, a similar email that's being sent out to Starlink users in Africa. Now, this one kinda of has a little bit more details, and basically what it says is in bold here, it says, if you are operating your Starlink kit in an area other than areas designated as available on the Starlink availability map, we would like to remind you that this is in violation of the Starlink terms and starting April 30th, 2024, you will be unable to connect to the internet except to access your Starlink account where you can make updates to your account. So this is pretty big, this is pretty big news. Basically what this email is saying is that Starlink is no longer going to allow users of the Roam service to connect to the internet in countries that are not approved. They're not specifically approved by the local government. So the email goes on to talk about the mobile regional plan, uh, also known as the Rome regional plan, and how that there's a two month restriction on that service. So what some people are doing is they're buying this Rome plan, the regional version, and they're buying it in a country that where Starlink is available, and then they're traveling and living, actually living in a country using that service where Starlink service is not technically available. And what Starlink is reminding them in this email is basically saying, hey, after two months, if you're in one spot in a country that you didn't register for service in, we're going to terminate your access unless you update your service location to an approved area. Now, if we go to the Starlink terms of service, there's actually a pretty interesting new part in this terms of service. Uh, I'm on the Starlink website, and if you go all the way down to the bottom, uh, hit privacy and legal, and select your country, this is where you can find the terms of service. So if we go all the way down to section five for the mobile service plans, section 5.1, mobile service plans, it mentions kind of what I had already covered, basically that services are only available where Starlink is authorized to offer active coverage. So this new change, which I'll highlight for you here, says that Starlink may immediately suspend your services if your new location is not in an authorized territory marked available or waitlist on the Starlink map. 
And what that's referring to is this two month restriction. So if you have the uh, regional roam plan, regional mobile plan, whatever you wanna call it, you buy it in one country, let's say you, you buy it in the United States and you actually live or plan to operate that unit in Mexico. So with the regional roam plan, you can do that. You can travel with it freely. However, what Starlink is saying is that if you are doing this and you live in one, loca in one country that is not your activation country for more than two months, you're gonna be forced to update your account information. Now, if the country that you're actually in is not an authorized location where Starlink service is available, you will not be able to change your address and therefore your account will be terminated. Your service will no longer work after that two month period. So this whole situation in Africa is a lot more wider reaching than just the people that are in Zimbabwe that are gonna be losing their internet access. Starlink is making some pretty big statements here in this email, even though customers like me aren't really affected, we're not getting this email. It does have some pretty big implications. So number one, the fact that Starlink is saying that you will no longer be able to receive internet access in unauthorized countries, and we have to assume that they mean worldwide, even though it seems like a majority of these emails are going out to users in Africa. The second thing is that this is the first indication that Starlink's gonna enforce their two month restriction for the regional mobile slash roam plans. Now this two month restriction has always been there in the terms of service, it's always been a thing. But as far as I know, Starlink has never really enforced that. So it appears like they're gonna start enforcing this two month restriction, meaning if you use regional roam, and you're traveling in a country for more than two months outside of your original service address, then you're gonna to have to kind of either update the country on your account or move to another country to be able to reset that timer. So that's a pretty big implication for a lot of customers out there, even if you're not in Africa. So I thought this was super interesting and I'm sure that this will not be the last battle that we see over internet access in underdeveloped areas. Starlink is pretty revolutionary just in the fact that it provides high speed, low latency internet, basically anywhere on the globe. And that is very worrying if you're a government that likes to be in control or have a lot of oversight over your citizens' internet activities. Starlink is obviously not wanting to be involved in a lot of that political stuff. So if a country like Zimbabwe complains and asks Starlink to disable services, they of course will, but it just goes to show you what kind of disruption that Starlink internet service and other services in the future will be for countries like this. It's going to be harder and harder for oppressive governments to really be in control of internet access for their citizens as more and more of these services go online, where you basically have unrestricted internet access anywhere in the world. So I thought it was super interesting and I thought I'd share it with you today in this video. I'd like to know what you think in the comments below. So share with me, you know, if you're one of these users that are affected, what are you gonna be doing as an alternative to Starlink? If you're a user of the regional roam service and you're a traveler, digital nomad maybe, what do you think about this enforcement of the two month rule? Is that gonna affect your plans at all? So I'm sure that we'll have more updates on this situation as it progresses and it'll be interesting to see after April 30th, how many people get disconnected and what other kinds of implications that it has, what other changes happen. So I'll be sure to update you in another video if anything interesting develops. So I appreciate you watching. Make sure you give us a thumbs up if you appreciated this video and the other things that we do on this channel. And make sure you visit our website, starlinkhardware.com. We'll see you in the next one.